welcome to superior profit weekly market roundup 21st october 2017 i am sagan nandi chief analyst and trader at superior profit a company based in singapore i will not take time to introduce myself if you are interested to know more about me the company superior profit or more importantly how it can help in your trading you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about pane before we begin let me go through the standard disclaimer this demonstration is for educational purposes only it is designed to share information on superior profits trading system the information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading past performance is no guarantee of future return superior profit is not an investment advisor this session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience as usual we will look at oil gold and the usa broad market etfs using q technical charts then we will look into broad market internal analysis and sector industry analysis using graphs and ranking table along the way we may go through some of the posts in our traders community and look for potential trades for the coming week Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions through the Q&A panel. I will try to answer them as we go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let us move to live system. We start by looking at US oil, the oil ETF. We are looking at US oil using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side and daily hop on template on the right hand side. in the weekly chart we can see that us oil is in uptrend when we look at the daily chart you may remember in last week's market round up we had discussed that price was at this candle on last friday it was not in clear uptrend in the daily chart based on that we decided not to take any swing long trade there was no valid q trade setup in the long direction this week oil tried to go up but then came back to almost the same price where it closed one week ago so the decision not to take any trade in us oil was a good decision at the right edge of the chart also there is no q standard trade setup we are looking at gold using the same backdrop template on the left hand side and hop on template on the right hand side that is our at a glance combined template that helps us decide an opportunity at the right edge of the chart in last week's market round up we mentioned that gold was going up however it was pretty far from the recent low so we would not be taking any long trade because the stop loss will be far away that was also an useful decision this week gold pulled back it was overbought we can see that from the green dot on top of the candle this week it came down near value area it has created a higher high if it went up next week it might create a higher low and give us a go with flow long trade opportunity however we see that gld is inside a triangle formation bounded by resistance memory at the top and support memory at the bottom 
Therefore, unless gold breaks out of the triangle and gives us a new swing low, probably going up, breaking the memory resistance, coming down a bit and going up again, thereby giving a low risk swing low that could give us a proper go with flow long trade opportunity. Right now, because it is inside the triangle pattern, we are not going to attempt any trade, either in the long direction or in the short direction. Before going into the broad market ETFs, let us look at broad market internals. Every week we look at broad market internals using NASDAQ composite index on the left hand side, NYSE composite index on the right hand side, both using weekly charts. As this analysis is using broad market indices and longer duration weekly charts, it is to be used only for long term investment decisions, not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. This week, both NASDAQ composite index and NYSC composite index made new all time highs. They are in clear uptrend in the weekly charts. The internal still couldn't surpass earlier peaks. However, in recent times, it is strengthening considerably. For this specific week, all but one of the internals increased. The only internal that declined is the new high low for NYSE. All the other five internals went up. And all of them, all the six internals closed above zero. Based on this objective analysis, we may conclude that the broad market indices are in clear uptrend. There is no doubt about that. Internals remain weak over longer period, however, strengthened considerably in recent weeks. And for this specific week, the internals are clearly bullish. This shows broad strength in the market. And we will arrive at the same conclusion from the broad market ETFs analysis, as well as sector industry analysis that we will look at later. Let's start with the broad market ETFs analysis. We are looking at SPY, S&P 500 ETF using the at a glance template. We can see that SPY made a new all time high. In the weekly chart, it is now bullish. That is the backdrop color in the weekly chart is cyan for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks. It is overbought as we can see from the stretch dots appearing on top of the weekly candle. In the daily chart, it is also clearly bullish above upper boundary overbought. Last week we saw minuscule activity. This week activity improved and specifically on Friday we see very high activity. And the Friday's price move is also strongly bullish. As we mentioned in the last session also, it is not the right time to take a long trade because price is already overbought. It broke out of the range bound move around this area and since then gradually going up. We continue to discuss in all the sessions that if SPY pull back a little bit, K 
came to value area and tilted up, then that would give us a low risk swing long entry opportunity. Until that happens, taking a long trade above upper boundary will result in a trade with very large stop loss. That is not the superior profit way. So we will stay away from taking long trade in SPY right now. And we will achieve a similar conclusion in the other broad market ETFs also. Let's look at QQQ. QQQ also made new all time high. Here we can see the weekly candle is bullish, that is backdrop candle color is cyan for four successive weeks. It is overbought in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, just like SPY, it broke above the narrow range, sideways range on this candle and since then gradually moving up. It didn't pull back to value area to give us a low risk long entry opportunity. Though it made a new all time high in the weekly chart, in the daily chart we see that Friday's candle is not as bullish as SPY. It did open with a gap up, but from the opening price it dropped little bit, but it dropped as we can infer from the solid shape of the candle. In QQQ also, activity improved compared to last week and on Friday, activity was high. Not very high as was in case of SPY. So looking at SPY and QQQ, we can infer that QQQ is relatively weaker and SPY is stronger between these two ETFs. At the right edge, there is no trade signal in QQQ. DIA continues to be the strongest. In the weekly chart, we can clearly see it made a new all time high with a very bullish shaped candle and backdrop candle color is now bullish for one, two, three, four, five, six weeks. It is overbought as we can see from the dot, stretch dot appearing on the weekly candle. In the daily chart also it is grinding higher, clearly overbought for many, many days as seen from the dots appearing on the daily candle. This is the only broad market ETF where weekly activity is high. Much higher than previous week and it is also high as indicated by the thick line on the weekly activity bar. In the daily chart we can see activity on Friday was very high. DIA is also overbought far above the upper boundary line. So we will not be able to take any low risk swing long trade right now. There is no standard Q trade setup at the right edge of DIA. The last broad market ETF that we analyze is IWM, that is Russell 2000 ETF. Two weeks ago, already we observed that the daily candle colors of IWM turned yellow, much before the other three ETFs. Since then, it went down. On Friday, it opened with a gap up. However, price fell from open, as we can see from the solid shape of the candle. Though price opened with a gap up from the relative performance line that is declining, we see that it is continuing to underperform the market. On Friday also, the relative performance tilted down, showing that it 
underperformed SPY. From the weekly chart, we see that though it went up from previous week's close, it failed to make a new all-time high. Looking from the right side in the daily chart, we see that it is in uptrend. It made a higher high. Maybe it made a higher low on Thursday. But there is no valid trade setup at the right edge of the chart. In an uptrend, to take a valid trade, we need a go with flow swing trade setup that requires a cyan color candle on the right hand side. We didn't have that, so we don't have any long trade at the right edge of the chart. And because IWM is in uptrend, we are not going to take any short trade right now. So all the ETFs show that the market continues to be bullish, going up with higher highs and higher lows. The broad market internals display the same picture. When we look into sector and industry analysis, it will become apparent that the industries that were up for many months are continuing to remain up, maybe moving sideways, maybe moving up a little bit, but not falling down much. On the other hand, the sectors and more so for the industries that were languishing for a long time, several of them are starting to turn up. We will probably have some catching the bottom by opportunity in some stocks of these industries. Let us go into sector industry analysis to look for such potential trades. Every week we look at sector performance by analyzing 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar shows the performance of this week, yellow bar performance of one week prior to red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks prior to yellow bar. Any bar coming to the right of the zero level indicates that the sector improved and any bar coming to the left side shows that the sector went down. Together, these three periods constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. This week we see eight of the 11 sectors gained. This shows broad strength of the market as well as appears from the internal analysis as well as the broad market ETFs analysis. Energy is one sector that declined and you may see that several oil and gas industries declined as well. Later on during industry analysis, we will look at some of the stocks in oil related industries. Healthcare sector improved significantly. If you were watching Q drill, then you knew that several healthcare industries were at the bottom of the ranks. And now they seem to be turning up from the bottom. We'll analyze them further using Q drill. Consumer discretionary as a sector also went up, though not by as high a percentage as healthcare. Several consumer discretionary industries like apparel retailers, etc., were also languishing, and they seem to show some signs of improvement this week. Again, just like in healthcare industries, we may look for potential bottom catching opportunities in consumer discretionary related industries. 
as you know, U.S. government is trying to provide a tax cut for U.S. population. And if that comes true, it may result in higher discretionary spending. Also, the Christmas festival period is coming. Those two combined together may lead to some of the retail stocks, maybe department stores or maybe retailers, apparel retailers, may go up as a result of that. That is a hypothesis. We will need confirmation from Q charts and Q vital analysis. In today's session, we will look into that and probably we'll find some suitable opportunity in this industry. We are now looking at industries best performing in last five days. The best performing industries gained substantially between 4.4% for textile and apparel to 6% for motorcycle manufacturers. Most of these are turning around from very bottom. This is true for motorcycle manufacturers several healthcare industries, we'll look at healthcare industries later, and also true for footwear, textile, and apparel industries. So motorcycle manufacturers, multiple healthcare industries, and footwear, textile, apparel, all were languishing for a long time. They seems to be going up, not only in terms of percentage gain this week, but also in terms of rank improvement, as we will see later. This is why I mentioned earlier that the stocks that were at the top are holding on to their high level and the stocks at the bottom seems to start to go up. This week's biggest gainer is motorcycle manufacturers. As you remember, in last week's market roundup, we saw that motorcycle manufacturers was biggest rank improver. And when an industry is biggest rank improver, we often see that in subsequent weeks, it turns out to be biggest gainer, which happened again for motorcycle manufacturers. In last week's session, we also discussed about Harley-Davidson, HOG. It had earnings on 17th October. It was at a low price. Based on that, we analyzed that it could be appropriate to take a short put vertical on HOG. If somebody took the trade, then that would be very profitable. Let's look at HOG again using Q Vital to see its fundamentals. And then we look at its charts. In Q Vital, we can enter the root stop, click on the trip years button. This is a motorcycle manufacturer. Not many motorcycle manufacturers are left in the USA market. It found two. <laughs> I thought only Harley Davidson. Let's see what else did it find. We can get the fundamental statistics by clicking the calculator button. It retrieves the data from Thomson Reuters icon or Metastock Zenith and does a lot of calculation. Okay, it is only one stock, HOG. It is not optimally valued and it is only one stock. So we don't know how good its growth is unless we look at the growth tab. And from the growth tab, the key columns would be the EPS growth, five year to one year, compound aggregate growth rate and revenue growth, five years to one year. 
we can see that EPS growth is positive, mostly positive. One year ago, it declined a little bit, but in the most recent year, EPS growth became positive again. Revenue growth is more or less steady. It's neither going up nor going down. Because there is only one stock in this peer list, the peer comparison is not that effective. But let us look at the Q charts. In last week's market roundup, we observed that HOG came down to watermark support level, both in the daily chart and weekly chart. It was prior to earnings. So we discussed that if it gives a valid long trade signal, we could take it using short put vertical. There was a bull release signal on this candle. However, the candle color was red, so we would not take any long trade on that day. The valid long trade signal appeared on the next candle where the traffic light candle color turned yellow, neutral. So we could take a short put vertical on that day. And we can see that after earnings, HOG went up sharply. So the short put vertical entered on this candle benefited not only from the price move upward, that is the delta gain, but also from volatility crash. The volatility crash is also shown from the options template in Q Elite for Trade Station. We can see that when we decided to take the long trade, options prices were very high. High being indicated by the green color of the candles. And now price has moved up, but the options volatility has declined. We can see that from the line graph also. A short put vertical in turn on this candle benefited both from delta gain as well as volatility crash. Like this, if we have a long entry opportunity that is just before earnings, in superior profit way, we prefer to take short put verticals at those times. Taking long stock will be risky. That is for swing trading because the stock can suddenly move either way. Simply buying call or put will be too expensive. And even if the stock moves in our direction because of volatility crash, the simple call put trade may lose in value. A short vertical trade is most appropriate under such situations. Short put vertical for a bullish trade and short call vertical for a bearish trade. In this case, we had a bullish signal on this yellow candle. So we would try to capitalize on that using short put vertical and the trade turned out to be pretty profitable. We can see three healthcare related industries went up. They were languishing for a long time. We will look it up using Q drill. I shared a trade idea on Cardinal Health in this way. We will look it up in the community. There may be other long opportunities. You may look for those using Qtrail. For now, let us look at how the healthcare industries are turning up. And then we'll look at the CAH community post. Every time we open Qtrail, it analyzes the 11 sectors and about 170 industries now. Their performance is analyzed across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently for recent periods across 10 days, 5 days, 2 days, and 1 day. Q drill assigns a rank of 1 to the best performing sector or industry 
for each of the review periods and the large number to the sector industry that is the worst performer. It also applies a heat map cyan to rank one magenta to the worst performer and a color gradient to all the sectors or industries in between. The result is a heat map and ranking table that in an instant can tell us which sector industry is strong and on top of that which ones are strengthening or which ones are weak or are weakening at present. That helps us align sector industry strength with our trade. Other than the ranking and heat map table, which was available in QEdge also, in QDrill now, additionally, we have information about the depth of the market. So every review period in real time, we can see for sectors, how many sectors are going up, how many going down. The first number represents the number of sectors going up. So on last Friday, nine went up and two went down. Over five days period, that is last week, we can see eight sectors went up, three went down. Similar depth information is available for the industries. We can see that over last Friday, 132 industries went up, 41 went down. And over last week, that is last five days, 122 industries went up, 51 went down. So the whole weekly data shows that there is strength in the market. So now we can look at market strength from many different angles and all are unique viewpoints. One is the broad market internals where we study the indices, broad market indices, plus new high lows, advanced decline and up down volume. That is looking under the hood. Then we look at the broad market ETFs that show how the actual traders are moving the market up or down. And now the sector and industry depth information shows that when the market is going up, is there broad participation in that move or not? And from the depth information, we can see that yes, for this way, there is definitely broad market participation in the up move, both in terms of sector and in terms of industry. Also, we have the rank change information at the right side of the sector industry age information. You can imagine this as a kind of acceleration. So if two cars are moving forward, one is ahead of the other, still the second car may overtake the first one if it starts to have higher acceleration, which is kind of rank change in this analysis. So if you see that an industry was languishing for a long time, whether it is gaining strength or not can be decided based on two factors. One is its speed is already high. We can see that by looking for cyan color across five day period. The other way of Inferring that an industry is strengthening is to see if its acceleration is higher than others. That we can infer by looking at the cyan color on the rank change 10 day, five day period. I have seen that this is probably the most effective way of trying to predict where the industries are going to be in subsequent weeks. Are they going to go up or down? In many past weekly market roundups, we have used these mechanics using the graphs, but now using QDrill, the same power is in the hands of all the traders, not using 
graphs, but with much more flexible and easy to use, this rank change column. And we will make good use of them in today's session as well. We can click on the magnifying glass to copy the data into sector work area and industry work area. And now we can filter for healthcare. Instantly from the color coding, we can see that many of the healthcare industries were magenta over all the monthly review periods, M1 to M12. Some of them tried to gain strength in the middle, but again declined, turning magenta. However, over 10 days period, and more so over five days period, many of them turned cyan. The bold letter in several of these industries show that they are among the top 20% of all the industries. So whether it is healthcare services or healthcare facilities, which in fact has the best rank possible one, they are all among the top 20% of all the industries. Interestingly, we see that not only are the industries strong, several of them have strong rank gain at the same time. That means they came forward from behind very strongly. This industry, for example, healthcare services has the second best acceleration. Its rank gained from 145 over 10 days to six over five days. So we could easily drill down by clicking the get stocks button, find the fundamentally strong stock in this industry or in some other industry like healthcare facility and then look at technical charts finally. During the week, I observed that these industries were strengthening and I had found an opportunity in CAH. I shared it in traders community. Let's have a look at that post. On 19th October, as of 1.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time, I was looking at QDrill, and this is how the heat map ranking table looked at that time. You can see that many of the healthcare related industries were starting to get strong over two days, over one day period, over two days period, and some also over five days period at that time. And the rank change, that's the acceleration over 10 day to five day was also turning cyan. Then I looked at some of the healthcare distributors by drilling down in QDrill, we can do that. And CAH immediately caught my attention. It has a good balance of valuation. The valuation columns, relative value score, internal value score are in blue color. That is optimally valued stock. And the growth columns, the five year to one year EPS growth and five year to one year revenue growth were in mostly green colors showing that CAH was stronger relative to the other stocks in this list in terms of growth. It paid a small dividend, 2.86. Another thing that caught my attention other than the valuation and growth strength is that the stock was very near 52 week low only 3% above 52 week low. That means if we could buy it and the stock indeed went up, we'll be catching it at almost the lowest possible price, 
will never catch a falling knife, a stock that is still falling. So we will never be able to catch the stock at the very bottom. A 3% from the 52 week low is probably as good as it can get for a trader who is going to risk only small amount. That is the stop loss will not be far away. So all these inference I could do from Q drill itself before looking into the Q charts. And as of that day when I shared the post, the Q charts looked like this. In the weekly chart, I saw that it came to a very deep watermark level where very high activity had come earlier. That is buyers must had stepped in at that point. Now price came to approximately the same level. The backdrop candle color turned bullish. The shape was also bullish and we had a bull release signal in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, price came to watermark support level. There was a memory support trend line. We had a very bullish shape candle and the daily traffic candle color also turned bullish. We had bull release signal few days ago. It broke above one of the memory resistance lines. There was another memory resistance nearby that was probably the only reason one might be cautious about this long trend. Other than that, to me, everything looked quite good. Industry was strengthening, fundamental was good. The chart was going up from a base where price reversed earlier. If we go back to the fundamentals analysis using Q drill, then we could also notice that earnings is not very far away. It is on 6th November. So this is another case like Harley Davidson where you could take a bullish position. However, earnings is nearby. So under such circumstances for swing trading, I don't like to risk money on taking a stock buy position, but I am happy to take a short put vertical. There are many ways you could create a short put vertical and probably this registration graph is not very legible, but it just shows that Using short put vertical, we could have defined profit for defined risk. The ratio between the profit and the risk can be adjusted based on the strikes that we use. And often it is possible to have a reward risk of one is to one. That is based on only statistical theory, that is options pricing theory. So if you could construct such a put vertical, short put vertical, where statistically it has one is to one reward risk ratio. And then knowing that on the chart you have additional strength that the stock will move higher. The fundamental strength is also showing that those who trade based on fundamentals are probably going to buy now rather than sell. And the industry itself is strengthening. So the bigger fund managers are probably going to buy it now or buying it rather than selling. When all those factors are aligned together, then in reality, the one is to one reward risk ratio that is based on only option pricing model in reality turns out to be a much more attractive trade opportunity. And it was very near 52 week low. So this is almost a copy trade of Harley Davidson. 
that gave very high profit last week. Since I shared the trade, CH is holding on and probably going up a little bit. Let's look at its chart as of Friday's close. We can see that on Friday it went precisely hit the memory resistance line and slightly pulled back from there. It opened with a gap up and it did close with a hollow candle. So it is still bullish. Interestingly, looking at the memory resistance line, if somebody had taken a short put vertical on this candle, one could even book quick profit precisely at the memory resistance level. I guess it would give at least 15% profit using short put vertical by that time. However, as a swing trade, one can also hold on to it. Earnings is sometime in November. By that time, looking at the chart, daily chart and also the weekly chart, which is strongly bullish, it seems the likelihood is higher that it will go up and the trade would give much more profit. Coming back to best performing industries, we see that footwear and textile and apparel were languishing for many months. They are turning around. We can see that from Q drill. And there may be several optimally priced, fundamentally strong stocks that are starting to go up. And you may look for buy opportunities in them. We look at some of them when going through the best rank improving analysis. We are looking at the industries was performing in last five days. Several of them are related to energy. This we mentioned while doing the sector analysis also that energy is only one of the few sectors that declined this week. And we see several oil related industries declined with that. We can look into Q drill and immediately identify the oil related industries and their weakness. Out of that, you will see that oil and gas refining and marketing is one industry that was stronger in previous months and is weakening now. PSX in this industry dropped beautifully after giving a box short trade setup at a long term watermark resistance level of 94. It precisely reversed from that. And also interestingly, it displayed a bearish shade wind precisely the day before the large drop. In this way, bearish shade wind signal not only helps to protect profit using trailing stop, but also helps to catch a reversal trade at the very extreme. So when we saw that there was a box short trade setup, and additionally, it had a bearish headwind signal, we will be very cautious about any long position, certainly put a trailing stop. And it was a valid short trade setup using box setup. So we would also like to take a short position. So we we'll look at PSX to look at that trade previous week. Now PSX was also fundamentally weak. That would give us additional reason to short the stock. In the same industry, CLMT is another stock that is fundamentally weak. CLMT is also at pendulum high in Q charts and it may give a go with flow short opportunity in the coming week. So let us look at Q drill for the oil as oil and gas industries, then look at PSX, how beautifully the short trade could be taken. And then we we'll look at CLMT for a trade that may come next week. In Q drill, last time we analyzed healthcare industries. 
we can click the investigate magnifying glass again to refresh the data and filter for oil and gas. We can see several oil and gas industries were weak earlier and are weak now also. Why oil and gas refining and marketing caught my eye is because it was strong earlier, cyan color, and now becoming weak. Over five day period from the bold case, we know that it is one of the worst performers among the bottom 20%. I drill down using the get stocks button, or you can use the hotkey control shift S. It has found 33 stocks. We can click the calculator button to do the fundamental statistics calculation. We have all these stocks now. And we can see PSX, this stock, is very close to 52 week high. Only 4.4% below 52 week high. That is after the short trade. So when the short trade could be taken, that time it was at the very top. That is the beauty of the reversal trade setups in Q Global or Q Elite. It allows us to sometimes catch the very top when the unambiguous checklist conditions can be met. This was true for PSX. We can see it was not overvalued, but it was not undervalued. Valuation was medium, yellow. However, the growth was weak. It was all in red color. And the background being shaded shows that the growths were actually negative. Earnings is nearby. So in this case, one could take a short position using short call vertical. Now PSX is different from Harley Davidson or CAH because instead of being at pendulum low, it is at pendulum high. So PSX, if it has options, the options will be very low priced. Under such situations, it is perfectly okay to take a bearish trade using simple put option because we are not paying high price for the put option. So PSX was in an industry that was weakening its fundamentals where we, it was at pendulum high and let us look at the charts. When looking at PSX, on the weekly chart, we see that there was a very deep or lofty in this case, watermark level, long-term watermark resistance level around 94. It strongly went up. We saw that the industry was also strong earlier, hit the high, which had high activity earlier in the weekly chart. And I checked in the daily chart, it had very or extreme high activity at the same time. So it is likely that when a stock that dropped heavily from an earlier peak, and now price comes back to that level, some sellers will still be interested in selling the stock. Maybe selling their current holdings or maybe shorting the stock. So those are good short opportunities if we have a low risk opportunity using Q setups. So we'll be alert on this stock based on industry and fundamental analysis from Q drill. And then we'll see in the daily chart on this candle. It tried to go above the watermark resistance level that was at the same level as the weekly watermark resistance level long time ago. Then immediately it reversed down. So it created a false upside breakout. The exhaustion was there at the same price long time ago. So it met all the conditions of box short trade setup. And additionally, how beautifully we had 
a bearish headwind signal on top of the candle. So we'll be able to take a short trade right on this candle at the very top of 52 week high. Either using short call vertical or using simple put option. Let's see if it has options. We can check that from the options template. If it is options, the candles will be colored. We can see instantly that at the very top, the candle color was red. That is the option prices were very low. And we had the ability to short the stock at the very high, almost at the very high. Beautiful box short trade setup using put option and that would give very high profit as it dropped heavily the very next day. The profit would come from delta gain and also from a very sharp increase in implied volatility. In the same industry, when we look into Q drill, we can find CLMT, whose valuation is poor. It's overvalued now. Growth is weak. The shades in revenue shows that revenue growth is also negative. And it is not far from 52 week high, 12% below it. So probably just by looking at the percentage, you can infer that it is not going to be a box short trade at the very top, like in case of PSX that we saw just now. So from this percentage itself, you could infer that Probably if we are going to have a short trade, it is going to be go with flow short trade. So it is already starting to decline. It has negative earnings also. So let's look at the chart CLMT. CLMT weekly chart, we see that it has already turned magenta for two weeks now. In the daily chart, we see there is a memory resistance that shows we have lower highs and we have lower lows as well. At present, it is near value area. So next week, if it goes down and the candle color turns magenta in daily, it will give us a go with flow short trade opportunity. Weekly is already magenta. So if daily candle goes down, it will remain magenta and all the conditions for go with flow short trade setup would be met. If that happens, we'll have a trade where industry is weakening, fundamentals of the stock is weak, and on chart, we have a valid short trade setup. Those are the trades we call the truly highest probability trades, and in superior profit way, we prefer to take such trades. Sometimes we may take just technical trades, but when we have the easy to use unambiguous tools available to find truly highest probability trades, including industry strength weakness, fundamental strength weakness, and technical strength weakness, it is not probably useful to take trades only based on technical strength weakness. I have seen the percentage success rate may go up by at least 10% by using this complete 360 degrees analysis instead of using just technical analysis. Every week we look at the biggest rank improvers because they tend to turn out to be the biggest performer in subsequent weeks as happened with motorcycle manufacturers this week. And for several macro reasons, like the potential tax cut for US consumers, we may have additional confidence in taking buy position in multiple industries. Multiple consumer spending related retailers gained rank this week. Specialty stores, apparel and accessories retailers, other specialty retailers, home furnishing retailers. Using Q drill, you can see apparel retailers is one of them. This was languishing for a long time. Will stocks in this and similar other industries start to turn up and give 
catching the law by opportunities? Probably yes, because in apparel retailers, we have two stocks, AEO and ANF. Both of them went up beautifully from a swing low at Q, slow direction line in Q charts. This has happened already last week, Thursday, Friday. If we look at them using Q vital, then we can see that both are optimally valued. In terms of growth, AEO is stronger. So based on this analysis, if we had to take only one long position in this apparel retailers industry, we'll prefer to take AEO over ANF. If we could take two trades in the same industry, then we could take both probably. Let us look at apparel retailers industry in Q drill and look at AEO's fundamentals using Q vital. In Q drill, we can either filter for apparel retailers, but remember we are trying to find industries in this case that were accelerating. So we can do that by sorting on rank change, 10 days to five days, smallest to largest. And the industries that are accelerating faster will come to the top. An apparel retailer immediately catches the eye. It was magenta earlier, then gained strength considerably. We can see the acceleration or the rank change column, ranking eight and bright cyan color. We could drill down into the stocks and do their fundamental analysis from the drill down. Or alternatively, we could go to Q Vital Let's do it for AEO.N. We could do it for either of AEO or ANF. Click the get peers button. It has found 39 stocks. Then click the calculator button to retrieve the data and do the vital statistics calculation. And you will see many stocks in this apparel retail industry. They are optimally valued. To analyze them further, we could click the investigate button, go to vital work area, and sort from largest to smallest on relative value score. Immediately, we can see ANF is one of the strongest in terms of valuation, and so is AEO. Now, AEO looks more interesting to me because it is optimally valued, blue color. And also the growth columns are more green than ANF. ANF growth is poor, though it is optimally valued. Both of them went up nicely from the yellow direction line. Let's look at that. Earlier, there was a watermark support in weekly. On this weekly candle, there was earnings. Price tried to go down, immediately reversed, creating a false downside breakout. Since then, AEO gradually went up. In the daily chart, we see that after the bearish headwind came, that's why we are careful about holding long position through a bearish headwind signal the stock dropped considerably. For long-term investors, one may continue to hold, but for swing trader, this drop would be a too big drop. So one must exit the trade using trailing stop and will be alerted of possible drop using the bearish twin signal. Then it came to the yellow direction line, a major support level, and on Friday went up strongly with a very bullish shape and bullish color candle. This is not a standard Q trade setup. It could be a go with flow trade setup, long direction, if the weekly candle color was bullish. It was not bullish. 
but I know there are traders who look for fundamentally strong stocks to come at major support like the yellow direction line and moving up from there. That is a possible trade with a stop just below recent low that will give us a low risk entry point. ANF gave an almost similar trade opportunity. ANF also had earnings probably on this week. Before that, it went below the watermark resistance level and then reversed, so it created a false downside breakout, just like AEO. Since then, it went up slightly pulled back and this week went up again. In the daily chart, just like AEO, it displayed a bearish headwind signal. So swing traders would be cautious and protect long position with trailing stock. That would be wise because stock had a drop to the lower boundary level and the yellow direction level. That was a major support from there on Thursday and Friday price went up. Again, not a Standard go with flow trade setup because the weekly candle color is still yellow, but there are traders who look for fundamentally strong stocks to come to major support like yellow direction line and tilt up from there. Again, a trade which will give us a narrow stop loss long opportunity. So if you were watching Q drill for industry strength or strengthening, like in case of apparel retailers and drill down to fundamentally strong stocks and then look at the technical charts, you could probably take very low risk long trades in both AEO and ANF. What about possible trade opportunities in the coming week? We can look at CATO.N also in apparel retailers industry. It is now optimally valued, making a very nice base and may give a catching the very low buy opportunity if it breaks out of narrow range in Q charts. It is a very nice dividend also of 9.7%. And another stock finish line FINL is also optimally valued and it has a valid go with flow long trade as of Friday's close. Let's look up these charts. But before that we go to Q drill and use Q drill to see how we could locate these stocks drilling down from industry to stocks. In Q drill, we already sorted based on rank change, 10 day to five day, smallest to largest, that gave us the fastest upward moving industries at the top. So apparel retailer was one of them. We could drill down, go to Q vital, 39 stocks are found. We could click the calculator button to do the fundamental statistics calculation. And CATO is one stock which has very optimal valuation. Both relative and internal value scores are in bold case. So it is among the top 20 percentage of stocks. And the blue color shows that they are optimally valued. Growth is not good. That is expected for a stock that is at very low price right now. It is only 11% above 52 week low. So this is a stock in an industry that is strengthening. The stock is optimally valued very near 52 week low. Let's look at its charts. In the weekly chart, it dropped heavily. The industry was also weak, but for many weeks now, in fact, from the last earnings week when it dropped, that is around middle of August. It has neither moved down nor moved up. The weekly backdrop candle color has turned bullish. For several weeks, it had upper tails, so the candles were indecisive. But this week, the weekly candle closed with a bullish shape candle. And this is the first week after many weeks, many weeks from here, where we have a bull release signal in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, we see the same thing as if with a magnifying glass. After the last earnings, price couldn't go down anymore. It is moving sideways. It is 
inside a triangle pattern with resistance memory at the top, support memory at the bottom. That's why I mentioned if it breaks out of this narrow range, it may give us a low risk, long entry opportunity. Normally, we are not breakout traders except, as I have mentioned, when the breakout results in a low risk entry opportunity. In this case, because it was moving in very narrow range for a long time, a breakout with a stop just below the memory support will give us a low risk entry opportunity and therefore will be a valid Q trade. You may watch out for such opportunity. And if you are using real time chart, that may help you pinpoint the exact entry point. Now the activity is low, that is fine. If you see the Q unambiguous checklist for our trade setups, high activity is not a requirement in all the trade setups, like go with flow or headwind. So even if activity is low, we are allowed to take a Q trade. Yes, cattle looks a nice stock, pays a nice dividend also. Let's look it up again from Q drill. We have recreated Q drill, Q vital also, in a way that instantly we get all the information. So we can see it has a 9.7% dividend, pretty high dividend. Earnings is 16th November. A stock in, in this industry has a valid going flow setup also as of Friday's close, that is FINL. Finish line. In the weekly chart, it has a bullish shape candle and the backdrop candle color is also bullish cyan. In the daily chart, it is going up with higher low. We know that from the memory support lines and it had a higher high earlier. On Friday, it has given us a cyan color candle. That is the precise day where all the checklist conditions for go with flow trade setup were met. So one could take a long trade on Friday's market close with stop just below recent low. Looking at the memory support line, so one might put stop just below the memory support line. One might try to book partial profit once the risk distance is covered or at the upper boundary, which is the same level of the memory resistance line. These are not the only stock. There are many other interesting stocks in these and similar retail industries, they were languishing for a long time. It may be possible to find bottom catching opportunity in fundamentally strong stocks in many of them. And if the tax cut happens, several other industries may also go up, like department stores, which were also languishing for a long time. If we go to Q drill and look for department stores, you can see this is another industry that was weak for a long time, all the last 12 months. Over 10 days, it improved rank somewhat, but over five days, it improved rank heavily. I don't know if I shared any trade idea on that, but during the week, this caught my eye. You could catch it instantly by looking at the acceleration columns, that is the rank change columns and also the recent period performance change columns, department stores. You could drill down, it has found multiple stocks, could check their fundamentals, it's getting the data from the universe and doing the statistical calculation and JCPenney is one stock. Coles, I think KSS is Coles, is Coles is another stock, Macy's is another stock, all are optimally valued. They are not very, some of them are near 52 week low, like Jesse Penny, only 9% from 52 week low. This is 6% from 52 week low, but it is not optimally valued. I think it's JWN Nordstrom. It has good growth also, but it's not optimally valued anymore. We may look up Jesse Penny and Macy's. Doesn't it instantly look like an interesting chart? That's how, what I like about Q charts. It doesn't take more than a few seconds. 
JC Penny had a big drop and it had many issues along with other department stores in US. Here it had a sharply bearish candle, both in terms of shape and color, that created the first leg of double bottom. This week it has a bullish headwind signal. It has a memory resistance very near. That's the thing to be careful about. In the daily chart, it broke below a long term, this watermark support level, but immediately went back up. So probably stopping out the weak hands. Now it is in a triangle formation with resistance memory at the top, watermark support at the bottom. But overall, it seems to be the possible starting point of a double bottom in the weekly chart. If it can break above the memory resistance that is there in daily as well as with it. If that happens, we may be able to catch JC Penny at a very low price. What about Macy's? Another stock that was weak for a long time, same industry department stores, has a very similar looking chart. In this case, the bullish headwind in weekly chart came in the first leg of the possible double bottom. Now it has a cyan color candle in weekly, also has memory resistance nearby, just like JC Penny. In daily, it came precisely to the watermark level on this candle and went up. So if somebody was watching the industry turning stronger, was cognizant of this watermark support level using real-time fine-tune chart, they could precisely take a long at the very bottom of this candle. And they may still be holding partial position now. It looks bullish except for the memory resistance lines in daily, which is also in weekly. Let's look if their earnings is nearby. Yes, Jesse Penny's earnings is on 9th November, not very far, and Macy's is also 8th November. So it may be possible to take a short put vertical trade in them. Let's check out at least for one of them, Jesse Penny. Okay, we have Macy's, we can check out for Macy's. What is the options pricing? It is medium priced at present, not very high. What about Jesse Penny? Jesse Penny option prices are also medium. Probably as it moves towards earnings day, closer to earnings day, the options prices may be higher. We can see just before prior earnings here, also the options prices were very high. And when that happens, we'll be able to have very low risk and potentially highly profitable short put vertical trade. Just like we had in Harley Davidson and just like we could have in Cardinal Health CAH. Lastly, we look at the industries with biggest rank declines. As I mentioned, it seems that the stocks that were at the top are mostly holding on to their price and the stocks at the bottom, that is the, in the industries that were languishing are starting to go up. There are some industries every week that has relatively bigger rank decline. That is true for this week also, but there may not be many good short opportunities. We may look at Q drill and see that several of them are spotty, shifting between magenta sign, magenta sign, as if just staying at the same level and stopping smaller, weaker hands out, both for long trades and short trades. There are not many good short opportunities. Only one industry that caught my attention is semiconductors. That is an industry that we are observing for several weeks now in this weekly market roundups. They are at very high level and earnings of many of them are coming up. One may be COSAS because now they have the worst rank decline. No reason to exit them. One may be able to protect highly profitable stock long positions with put options. If there is weakness showing up before the earnings, 
but no reason to exit a profitable position while it is still going up. Let's just spend a few minutes with Q drill looking at the biggest rank decliners and then drill down into semiconductor industry. To look for the decelerating industries or the worst rank declines, we can look for rank change 10 days to 5 days, short from largest to smallest. Immediately the industries which has worst rank declines come to the top. You see several of them where we tried to become cyan turn magenta again. You may try to drill down and see if any of them are showing weakness, both in terms of fundamentals and Q charts, and then look for potential short opportunities. One industry that I mentioned caught my eye and several weeks now we are tracking this industry semiconductors. It was strong for many, many months. Actually, across all the last 12 months period, it is one of the best performer. But in recent periods, over five days, two days, one day, it has declined. We can immediately see from the rank decline columns that it is weakening. The magenta color is weak, be it in the performance column or the rank decline column. Semiconductor has multiple industries, so we can filter by semiconductors. And we can see that all three of them were stronger earlier and weakening now. Out of that, semiconductors is the worst decliner over 10 days to 5 days. We can see that from the rank change is 165 and most magenta. So we could drill down to look at the stocks. It is retrieving the stocks and found many stocks, 52 stocks. We can click the calculator button to do the fundamental statistics calculation. Click the investigate button to do filtering, sorting, etc. So let's sort it from smallest to largest based on relative valuation. So we can see there are many stocks which are overpriced now. And on top of that, there are some stocks that has poor growth also, red column. And many stocks are also near 52 week high. 52 week high green color means very close to 52 week high. So if you are holding long position, probably they are very profitable position by now, but earnings is coming for many of them. So it may be time to be a little bit cautious knowing that the rank decline is there for all the semiconductor related industries. You may see if there is a potential short opportunity, especially in the stocks which are weak in valuation as well as in growth. There are multiple such stocks. But finally, of course, we'll take short position if the chart gives us a valid Q short trend. You may do that analysis after the session, I will not go through that now. Once you start using Q drill, probably you will not be able to trade without that. Just like those using technical systems, those who use Q charts regularly, find it difficult to trade without the simple colorful Q charts. I am personally finding it extremely useful. Few more things are going to be added to Q drill. Currently in Q drill, we are able to drill down from the industries to stocks. We have the sector information also. What we are going to add is the ability to drill down from sector to industry. If we sort by sector over five days period, we see that healthcare, right? We saw healthcare is gaining in strength. Then we are going to add a feature whereby by clicking this button, the button is already added, the feature is not added yet, development is working on that. It will retrieve all the healthcare sectors industries and put them in the industry tab. 
we don't have to manually try to find out the industries related to a strengthening sector or weakening sector. Just like we can drill down from industries to stocks at present, we are going to add this last feature that we have planned for QDrill, the ability to drill down from sector to industry. We should be able to release it in next few days. A lot of testing is involved before releasing it, but we will be releasing it very soon to all of you. That is all that I plan to share in today's market roundup. Thanks to all of you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.